The knocking started about a month ago. I might have ignored it if it weren't for the fact that I already got eerie feelings about the wooded hill behind our house. I heard it from inside and went out the back door to investigate, thinking maybe someone was on our property, hacking down trees. This had happened in October, without our knowledge and I was ready to let someone have a piece of my mind. But when I stepped out of the covered patio and onto the wood porch, I was stopped in my tracks by the worst feeling deep in my gut. Let me preface this by saying, we bought this house back in February, and while I have always had weird, creepy, sometimes unexplained things happen to me, the things that we have experienced in the short ten months that we have lived in our house go far beyond what even I could have imagined. We live in a beautiful home on 11 acres in the North Carolina mountains. Only about two and a half acres are cleared, and that makes up our front and backyard. The house faces the right side of the property, so the side of the house is actually in the back. About 15 feet from the back door is a beautiful rock retaining wall that creates a barrier between the house and the remaining nine and a half wooded acre. The woods aren't on flat land, it's a massive hill that we have only been to the top of maybe four times. I will get more into detail of the layout of the uncleared part of our property later. The front yard still has about a dozen and a half nicely spaced trees, creating a beautifully shaded yard. So beautiful, we got married in this yard just a month after we moved in. About a week later, the pandemic shut everything down, forcing us to remain in our home, where we thought we were alone. This brings me back to the present. The original knocking that I heard happened on November 12th. Luckily, I am the type of person that photographs and takes videos of everything, and I pulled out my phone that day and recorded the sound. If I can figure out how, I will try and upload the video. I would like to say that what I heard was simply a woodpecker, but since moving in we have heard numerous woodpeckers going to town on the trees, and this sound is quite different. I doesn't come through on the videos I have taken, but standing outside, hearing it in person is terrifying. You can feel it in your chest and your stomach. Almost the feeling you get when you're in a car with the music playing loud, the bass that rattles your insides. It's almost like that. It's slow and deliberate, and when it happens, it's as if whatever is doing it is watching you. Now that the leaves have died and fallen from the trees, you can see into the woods well. But the underbrush is thick and so many things could be hiding, or standing in the open, but you wouldn't even know it. It's been a little over a month since I first heard the knocking, and while my wife and I have been trying to ignore it and live our lives as best we can, it's what happened two nights ago that has me fleeing to Reddit to tell our story and get some opinions. Our cats have been acting funny the last couple of weeks and our dog never seems to want to come inside right away. The path that she takes to come back in goes right past the rock retaining wall, and she stops there every time. She stares at the trees, sometimes she alerts to something. Other times she just sniffs wildly around the edge of the porch, as if something has been there. I always must raise my voice to snap her out of it and get her to come inside. We chalked it up to wild animals passing through that sections of the yard. We have coyotes, wild turkeys, raccoons and opossums frequent our yard. We had a flock of chickens that we had to rehome because the predators kept finding a way into the coop and killing them. However, two nights ago it snowed. I know what you're thinking. After it snowed, I found unexplained footprints behind our house. But no, that isn't what happened. I am from the Northwest, and I am used to massive amounts of snow. I love it, and for the last five years I haven't got to experience much of it because I live in the South. So the other night, when we heard what we thought was a raccoon or something messing with the trash bin, we flipped on the floodlights and to my delight, it was snowing. Not only was it snowing, it had been snowing for hours it seemed, and it was sticking. So the sound of something outside was immediately forgotten, and I quickly slipped on some shoes and a jacket and went out to enjoy the snow falling. It was so quiet as it always is when it snows. It was about 9.30 at night, and I didn't have a care in the world. I stood out on the deck looking up at the black sky, enjoying the crisp snowflakes as they hit my face, taking pictures and trying to capture good photos of snowflakes. 
I don't know how long I was out there, but I was interrupted by my wife. She doesn't want me to use her real name, so we will call her June. I was interrupted by June calling out the door. She seemed calm, but there was something in her voice that made my blood cold. She was asking me to, please come inside. If it weren't for the underlying tremor in her voice, I might have argued to stay out a little longer and let my inner child enjoy the first snowfall of the season. But the tone of her voice had me instantly walking up the stairs and into the house where she promptly locked the door. I was taking off my jacket and kicking off my shoes as I asked her what was wrong. She was pale, and her eyes kept shooting to the window behind me. It was what she said next that made me want to crawl inside a hole and never come out. Outside the dining room window, you can see where the tree line stops and it's a bare slope down into the yard. She said she had walked over and picked up our cat to watch me put in the snow. She said she looked for me for a minute before spotting me and wondering what in the world I was doing standing up at the peak of the slope. How I had gotten up there without slipping back down. That's when she saw movement to the right of the window and I walked up, taking pictures of the snow. She looked for me, a few feet from the window, to the figure standing up on the slope. It was dark and shadowed, but it was clearly facing the house, standing perfectly still, watching me. She said the cat went stiff and bolted out of her arms, and that's what broke her away from the window, and she rushed to the door to get me to come inside. That was two days ago. The snow has melted, and we haven't gone out past dark. We haven't seen anything else and the cats are acting almost normal. As normal as cats can be, I suppose. The knocking is happening at night now. Usually at sunset and for a little while after. I'm writing this now because we are sure whatever was out there watching me in snow is still there. Still watching. And we think it is what has been causing the knocking on the hill. This is all I can bring myself to write for now. I'm going to post again hopefully with a layout of our property, so it makes more sense. It's about 5 in the evening and the sun is due to set at 5.20. I'll update soon. While I was a Marine stationed at Quantico Marine Base, Virginia, I came back home from a 12-hour shift on base very late at night. This was some time after midnight. Being the only vehicle left in the parking lot for quite some time due to my shift, I parked closest to the building as possible for fear of somebody breaking into it overnight. I was half asleep while walking around my car, inspecting it carefully to make sure that nobody had tampered with anything that may cause problems later on. Growing up in my teenage years, I've had my car broken into twice and had somebody try to cut the brakes underneath my car. To say I'm paranoid is an understatement and very, what I would say, justifiable. With my keys already at hand, feeling around looking for them under dim light coming from one of the building's windows, thinking about how much sleep I was going to get before work again tomorrow morning, I noticed something not being right. With what I can only tell if I look closer, a strange hairy humanoid figure that was crouched down very low to the ground. This caused me to literally freeze and dead in my tracks, right before it sprung up like a coiled spring. It took off running with its back turning me very fast, covering at least 30 yards in only a matter of seconds without tripping over anything. It had to hurdle over the only thing visible was its massive shoulder height next to a large tree trunk as it ran by, disappearing from sight behind a building. The hair on the creature looked coarse and blackish brown or even dark gray, Maybe not sure why I thought though there were no other colors present. Its hair seemed matted down flat against skin, except for the shoulders where they laid somewhere long just past them, standing straight up as if being held by water or some type of oil, a slippery substance. It was so large that it really caught me off guard and my best guess is if it was running by at least 30 to 40 miles an hour, if not faster. It stood on two feet and its arms hung down to about its knees. I had read a story of somebody else who had seen something similar, but in another state. But I can remember word for word that he said because it sounded almost identical, except a creature he saw apparently ran on all fours and grabbed a deer with its massive hands, 
throwing it over a high voltage electrical fence. I can't say for certain that I saw the same thing, but it was definitely a huge hairy hominid. I think what's scary is who knows how long that thing had been there before I walked up watching me. If the Marines weren't so strict on where you can and can't walk to within a half mile radius of the base, then it would probably still be there. I was just starting my shift for the night. The park closes at 10 and I'm done with the day. It was about midnight and I was driving the back roads to get out of the park. There were no cars on the road heading towards town. The population is under 20,000. It could be considered by many a very small town. So I'm driving along and I see something darting across the road in front of me. It looked like a big coyote and then it turned its head staring at my car as it ran towards me with its eyes. I hit my brakes pretty hard, but it just kept kind of running off into the woods, each stride covering six to seven feet. It was huge and scared the crap out of me. I drove like hell to get back to the station. There's no way it was some escaped big cat we knew of, or any other type of big cat. There's no way it could have been a coyote fox or anything else that I know of. It was just far too large, easily bigger than a Great Dane dog. And since then, I had seen it at least three different times over the following two weeks. It didn't act aggressive, but more of an eerie presence than anything. So even though nothing major happened, my experiences still leave me all shaken up inside. There was something else that another park ranger in Idaho had experienced as well. Now his sister lives out on the prairie, and her family is near the town in Idaho, which she refuses to disclose. She's about 25 miles south of Boys. She told us that there's some type of large black dog she sees out near the prairie regularly, and it's freaking her out. She said that she could see its eyes in the nighttime, and it always seems to chase after her on the highway. Do you have any idea what sort of creature or animal this could be? Thank you. The remote jungle region of Argentina stretched out before us like an unforgiving abyss. Our team of Navy SEALs led by Grant venturing into the heart of danger. We were on a high-stakes mission to rescue a kidnapped scientist, the key to unveiling a new bioweapon that could reshape the face of modern warfare. The sweltering humidity clung to our skin, and the dense foliage seemed to close in around us, as if the jungle itself wanted to keep its secrets hidden. As we trekked deeper into the unforgiving terrain, our senses remained on high alert. Every rustle of leaves, every distant sound made us tense, ready for any encounter. Our mission was of utmost importance, and the lives of countless innocents were at stake. One fateful night, as we moved stealthily through the underbrush, the jungle seemed to come alive with an eerie energy. It was then that we spotted it an enigmatic and terrifying figure lurking amidst the trees. The moonlight cast a ghostly glow upon its form, revealing a grotesque and unnatural sight. This creature stood tall on its hind legs, its skeletal frame protruding beneath a sickly gray skin. Its limbs, grotesquely elongated, touched the ground like twisted appendages of a nightmarish nightmare. A spine that seemed to defy nature curved its back in an almost animalistic manner. Its eyes, hauntingly luminescent, locked onto mine, sending a shiver down my spine. This was no ordinary predator. It was an abomination of nature, a creature that should not exist. Before we could even process what we were witnessing, the creature sprang into action with supernatural speed. It moved as if it were one with the jungle, a blend of shadows and terror that closed the distance between us in mere seconds. Panic surged through our ranks as we scrambled to respond. Amidst the chaos, the sharp report of M16 rifles shattered the air, bullets finding their mark in the creature's hideous form. It let out a guttural, inhuman roar that reverberated through the night, a chorus of agony and fury. Despite our firepower, the creature managed to wound one of our team members before retreating into the shadows, leaving behind a trail of dark, viscous blood. Our mission continued, each step a reminder of the horrors we had encountered. We navigated through treacherous terrain, 
faced off against the paramilitary group guarding the kidnapped scientist and eventually emerged victorious with the scientist safely in our custody. But the memory of that fateful encounter with the creature remained etched in our minds, a question mark in the midst of our triumph. As we finally emerged from the jungle, the relief was palpable. The rescue had been a success, but we were haunted by the knowledge that something inexplicable, something beyond the realms of science and reason, had crossed our path. We often found ourselves sharing speculative glances, wondering if we had stumbled upon a creature born of nightmares, an ancient evil that had managed to survive in the hidden depths of the jungle. To this day, we carry that memory with us, a reminder that even in the face of danger and the unknown, our training and camaraderie can see us through. And as the sun sets over the distant horizon, casting long shadows that mirror the memory of that creature, we remain ever vigilant, ready for whatever challenges the world may throw our way. My father likes to frequent the sports club of the local university where he teaches to run and exercise. It is a large sports area with swimming pools, soccer and basketball fields, etc. He still goes there every now and then. This place is at the exit to the next town and close to where we live in the state of Sao Paulo, Brazil. He goes there walking and cuts the way along a trail that goes up a ravine, passing beside a large eucalyptus plantation. Through this shortcut, you can avoid walking half a kilometer uphill to the main entrance. A lot of people use this shortcut, including local employees. One day he went for a run a little later than usual, at around 6.30 p.m. About an hour later, the sun was already gone, and with just a few more minutes left of daylight, he was exhausted so decided to return by the same shortcut as usual. Would not be much of a problem since the full moon was high in the sky. When he reached the edge of the woods, he noticed a figure in the middle of the trees that looked like a horse inside the eucalyptus enclosure. He first ignored it and kept walking, thinking if he should try to communicate with someone around about it. Mind that this place is surrounded by farmers that own horses. He kept walking but started to feel eerie as if someone was watching him. The feeling soon became stronger, a few more steps, and he realized that the horse was walking alongside him. So he looked again between the trees and saw that it was behind a tree. He thought that was strange, a horse hiding. Also, it managed to stand facing the tree between them. He just shook it off and continued the trail. He was already halfway down, but the unsettling fear was increasing, so he looked at the horse again and, as his eyes adjusted to the darkness, he could see it a little better. Now it didn't really look like a horse, because he saw the animal jump from behind a tree to another, by the way. It jumped, it seemed to be a very tall and strong person. He stopped in shock and stared at the animal, still behind the tree, and noticed something swinging. What he previously thought was the horse's tail now looked like a man wearing a long coat. But the darkness and shadows of the branches were too confusing to figure it out. He decided to ignore it and move on, thinking it was maybe just his imagination. He kept on track, but at the end of the trail, there was a point where his path and the path where the animal was would cross each other. He started to freak out and decided to go back to the field and take the avenue. So he started walking back, paying close attention to the animal. He even thought it could be a friend trying to scare or make fun of him. Going back towards the field where the lights were now on, he could better see its silhouette. A massive muscular thing hunchback, apparently covered in thick fur and what seemed like pointy ears in its head. He stopped in disbelief, but the creature kept walking towards him, not worrying much about hiding anymore. That's when his blood ran cold. The animal was approaching from the side as if it wanted to trap him. He tried not to run in order to display confidence and avoid attention, so he fast walked back towards the field distancing from the trail when he took a last glance. The animal was there still, lowered in a bush on its fours like a gorilla. It looked like a huge human dog. When they were around 100 meters apart, my father ran to the main entrance at the avenue and was relieved to see that the animal did not follow. He came back by the avenue, still on high alert, sh his pants. Now every time he goes there, 
He makes sure he doesn't stay past dusk. In the summer of 1988, I was 14 years old visiting my dad. After my parents had separated, my dad decided to live out in a small house in the woods, about a half hour away from Missoula, Montana. Kind of off the grid. This was his dream and he allowed me to experience it with him about every other weekend. We would go hiking, hunting, kayaking, bird watching, you name it. We would sometimes camp out outside in the woods, and that is where I saw it. It was one of those camping trips I went on with my dad, where I not only saw a Bigfoot, but it was terribly close to me. My dad and I found a spot pretty deep in the brush to set up camp. When night fell, we decided to sleep in our sleeping bags outside to watch the stars. My dad fell asleep pretty quickly, but it was a bit harder for me. I remember trying extremely hard to fall asleep that night, but to be honest, even though by that time I had been on plenty of camping trips with my dad already, I was still pretty freaked out by the forest at night. This fear kept me awake all through the night. I remember that at a certain point when I was just starting to finally drift into sleep, I heard something come out of the trees and snapping twigs loudly as it walked on towards us. My dad still was fast asleep, and now I was basically pissing my pants. I thought some strange person was walking on towards our campsite, but as I squinted my eyes open a bit, I could see that only about 10 feet away from me was an enormous, hairy creature that stood and walked on two legs like a human would. Obviously, I wanted to scream out in fear, but I tried my best to pretend I was asleep in hopes that it would just eventually move along. I think the creature which I now believe to be a Bigfoot was attracted to the smell of the meat my dad had been cooking before. And strangely, it didn't seem the least bit interested in us. It seemed more interested in just slowly walking around our campsite, presumably looking for some of the food it must have thought we had. But I have to tell you that not only was I scared at the sight of the giant hairy man, but I was also sickened by the pungent and overwhelming odor that the beast was emitting. Eventually, the Bigfoot seemed to get bored and disappeared into the darkness. I remember trembling in my sleeping bag and not being able to sleep the rest of the night. I didn't tell my father about it until he woke up the next morning, because I was afraid if I tried to wake him up during the night, then the creature might see us awake or even hear us. I was not willing to find out how it would react when it did. When I told my dad about it, he just told me it was probably a large bear walking around on its hind legs. But when I described to him that the creature was extremely human-like and walked like a person would, he chalked it up to at me just either hallucinating from fear or that I was not aware that I was dreaming. To this day, I know exactly what I saw. It was about nine feet tall, with extremely long and matted brown hair all over its body, including the face, which to me seemed to look very human-like in a primitive sort of way. I still remember the horrible stench that made me want to vomit. That was probably the longest and most terrifying night of my life. But afterward, I've come to honor the experience, because I would come to realize that the creature was undoubtedly a Bigfoot, and I was one of the few people who got the chance to see it extremely up close. So to all of you skeptics out there, I understand your incredulity, but believe me, I've experienced it firsthand. There is no doubt that these creatures exist. I'm not sure about how abundant they are, but they truly exist, and they are not only scary looking and smelly, but they are a fascinating sight to see. And even though I only remember hearing the Bigfoot grunt and growl a bit, I feel that they are more human-like than apes due to the appearance of the face. That was actually the scariest part, seeing that not only was there a strange, giant creature creeping around my campsite, but it was a very human-like, albeit extremely hairy creature. And when I say hairy, I really mean it. I've never seen so much hair on the body of any creature. My words here can never do justice to what I saw that night as a teen. I can never describe to you just how otherworldly and surreal the whole situation felt. But it was real, and I know I wasn't dreaming because I could not get to sleep the whole night. In fact, I was very wide awake, 
even though I pretended to sleep while every now and then opening my eyes slightly to catch glimpses of the Bigfoot. To this day, I am greatly affected by the experience because it changed my whole perception of the world. After that, I would never doubt the possibility of anything existing, not even things like vampires, aliens, or the chupacabra. I learned from that night to always keep an open mind when hearing about the seemingly impossible, because I myself encountered a creature long thought, and still thought to be purely a myth by most people. I was living on the north shore of Oahu and my friends wanted to go camping out at Kena Point. I had to work late so I told them I would hike out late by myself and meet them out there. Keep in mind this area is unpopulated and usually frequented by local fishermen that camp out for the weekend. They are not the problem. What is the problem is that this area has had people killed out here, bodies dumped and drifters that have lived there. To put it frankly, when I am hiking out at night, I try to stay out of sight of any cars that might be driving by on the dirt mud path that you walk three miles down to get to the point. On the average weekend, you might see three, four groups of fishermen camping out past where the paved road ends. And since they are down by the water's edge and the main trail is closer to the mountains, I had a good amount of space to myself for my 11 o'clock at night hike out to the point by myself. About halfway there, I wished I never went. My heart skipped a beat when I looked up at the mountains at a group of silhouettes sitting around a fire with what looked like a torch near them and one guy holding another torch facing me. He looked like he was looking right at me. Even though they were up in the mountains and a good mile away from me up on a ridge, if you knew anything about the night marchers, you would be shitting your pants right now. As for me, I chose not to believe in ghosts and decided to use my flashlight to signal them. Surely, if they were a camping party, they would signal me back with their flashlights if they had them. So I spent about five minutes flicking my flashlight on and off toward them. And no freaking reply. The dude with the torch just seemed to be staring out at me. Somehow I convinced myself that they were just campers that didn't know the universal code of, Hey dudes, I'm flicking my flashlight at you because I am scared. I just want to confirm you are real people, so please flick me back. Unfortunately, they didn't understand this hiking etiquette, so I spent the rest of the one-mile hike muttering to the tall grass and bushes that I passed that if anything came out of them, I was going to kill them. And yes, I know the night marchers are ghosts and I can't technically kill them, but what can I say? You say some strange shit when you are really freaking scared. So a few years ago, I took a solo motorcycle trip down Baja, California. Towards the bottom of the peninsula, near the town of La Paz, I decided I was going to camp on a stretch of secluded beach. This was something I'd already done a number of times during the trip, and I'd always been fine. So in the afternoon, I load up some supplies in town and head out. About 20 miles outside of the city, about 5 miles from the nearest sign of civilization, I came to a nice beach with a little bungalow bar. I asked the guy a gringo behind the bar about possibly camping in the vicinity. He said, yeah, give it a go. There's nobody out here, so it'll be fine. Good enough for me. I drove about two miles down the beach on a sandy little path. About 50 yards from the sandy path, there were some decently sized dunes. Then there was the sea. I pitched by tent among the dunes next to my bike, cooked some dinner, took a swim, and when it got dark, I crawled inside and read a book with my headlamp. Around midnight, I saw lights illuminate the side of my tent. WTF. I quickly turned off my headlamp and stuck my head out the tent flap. Sure enough, there was a car slowly bumping its way down the sandy track. Oh shit. The car comes to a stop directly parallel to my tent. Headlights off. Car doors open and close. Oh shit. I grabbed my little Leatherman knife, not sure what I thought I was going to do with it exactly, and scrambled about 20 yards away from the tent and hid in the dunes. Laying flat on the sand, I waited, hoping against hope that nobody found me. What if they do? Should I attack them first? What if they have guns? Could I actually stab someone? 
It probably doesn't matter, they probably have guns. After what felt like an hour of sheer panic, but was probably more like 15 minutes, I hear car doors open and close again. Headlights on. They did a three-point turnaround. I thought for a split second that they were just turning the car to use the headlights to find me, and then they drove back the way they came. I still didn't go back to the tent for probably an hour. I just laid in the sand. Eventually, I snuck back. Check it out for footprints around, but I couldn't tell if they were new or mine from earlier. I packed everything up in the dark, loaded it on my bike ready to make a quick getaway should they come back. Then I sat there with my back against the bike for the rest of the night watching the road until morning. I was deployed for over a year in Afghanistan. It was one of the most unique and terrifying experiences of my life. I was walking back to the base alone one night, deep in the night. Everything was silent for miles in the desert night. You can really hear just about everything. There were no city lights in sight, the night was black, and the only illumination came from my flashlight, which cut a small beam into the darkness. The base, however, was well lit, so there was ample light to see the ground at my feet. I heard an unfamiliar noise off in the distance, which kind of reminded me of a woman screaming. As I'm patrolling, I was a little concerned and took off my helmet, adjusted the volume of my radio. Just as I did this, these horrible, what I can describe as demonic, screams started coming from all directions around me. Completely unsure of what to do, I made the decision to stay where I was until I could properly assess what was happening. After a few minutes, this large light materialized about 45 meters into the air above me. It circled around me for a minute or two with this horrible screaming sound coming from it. I kept my weapon aimed at the sky, waiting to see if anything else would happen. It seemed to nearly pulsate in light and emit this loud noise. I began to think that this was some sort of cloaking device before dematerializing. Several other soldiers saw too, but nobody could figure out what it was. When I got home, I told my wife about the situation, and she seemed to believe that I saw a UFO of some kind. I myself am not exactly sure, but it is something I cannot explain to this day. Also, I was in Iraq in 2010 and witnessed another strange thing. One night around 3.30 a.m., I took up my guard position on the roof of a police station, and suddenly this green light enveloped everything. It appeared that some sort of craft was flying over us, but nobody else saw it at the time. Apparently, I was the only one to notice this, and even when I talked about it with fellow soldiers, Nobody seemed to understand what I was saying like they were never present for it, even though they were only several yards away from me. I encountered a creature on July 23, 2015, right around 10 p.m. I live in a small town called Penfield in Clearfield County, Pennsylvania. I was driving home from work on a Boy Scout road in Penfield, and I saw a large brownish tan creature crouching on the side of the road. It had a very large misshapen head, yellowish eyes, and a very long nose, kind of dare I say goblin-like. At this point, I slammed my foot into the gas pedal and did not let off the gas until I reached my home. I'm a very factual-based person, and I don't hold any personal beliefs as far as supernatural things are concerned. But since that night, I don't know what to think anymore. The reason I'm writing this is because I saw that thing back in November, and see, I have a friend who was a sergeant. He claimed to have seen a goat man back in the fall of last year as well. This is all the information I could really give you for now. If you need any more, please feel free to ask me. Starting roughly 19 years ago, I'm 38 now. I was in the woods behind one of my friend's houses camping. We were maybe only 500-550 yards away from the house, and only took a few steps in the direction of the house to see it on the other side of the cornfield that was used for hay that year. We had a fire started, and we were just hanging out talking and enjoying the summer night. 
We had gone to Lake Michigan earlier, and a girl we met that lived nearby decided to come with us and hang out being our one friend knew her somewhat from his job. We all agreed she would get the tent and we would all sleep around the fire. After an hour or so, we had an amazingly bright light shine down right over us. We all kind of wigged and got up, but then a strong wind came down on us and the light slowly moved away. We all decided it was the police helicopter looking for marijuana plants and seen our heat plus the fire on the thermal camera. We all laid back down and within maybe 10 minutes, we would all be backs to each other hearts racing. As we laid there, there was an ear spitting screech. Before any of us could get up something with some considerable weight hit the leaf littered forest floor. Now all of us standing, a creature that seemed no larger than a wolf, ran not walked, multiple times around us before we could get a bead on its location. The girl, sorry, forgot her name, now was in the tent doorway and two of my friends had almost teleported into the tent. They moved so fast in fear. At this point, the creature had stopped moving, but we still couldn't pinpoint where it had stopped. The only views we could get was it had a gray and white fur, not patterned, but random patches. It moved more like a person on all fours but way faster than even a wolf on a dead run. We also realized that the helicopter we figured was the dope scope was still nearby. Not far, but we could see stars being blocked out by it moving from west to east almost like it was strafing. Another 10 adrenaline-filled minutes passed, and we assumed it had left. After another hour of laying there listening and waiting for its return, we all started falling asleep. In the morning, nothing in the campsite was disturbed and nothing was damaged. I walked back to the house to get some eggs and other things for breakfast. Nothing felt off except for the constant feeling of being watched from the woods. But after that long night, it, I could understand it. On the way back, though, at the different angle of view, I noticed three distinct areas in the hay that were pressed down in an almost perfect triangle. Once I got closer, there was a static feeling to the air and all my arm hairs stood up. As I got closer to the woods, a strong feeling to turn around hit me like a ton of bricks. Across the field around 250 yards away, there is a piece of the woods that splits the two fields. In that narrow strip of trees stood a cross between a dog and a great ape about six, seven feet tall on two legs. It seemed I'd say uncomfortable being on two legs as it swayed side to side like it was unbalanced. I turned back and headed to the campsite and made breakfast saying nothing to the rest as heading back to the house would have us going right by the creature. Roughly three hours later we headed to the house and there was no sightings or off feelings. The next sighting was about four years later while hunting family property about four miles from the original sighting. Sitting in the woods by myself that evening, I had a group of four does come in. Now I would sit in the thicker woods, but had a 270 sighted in at 100 yards. I had three lanes that were optimal for that rifle, but two years before got a hard shot on a buck, only 75 yards away, and threaded a needle with the bullet, so I was very comfortable with any shot. Anyway, the does were calm and moving slowly feeding with no care in the world. After several minutes, the largest doe kept checking behind them hearing something, but I could not. They suddenly jumped all at the same time and even crashed into trees trying to get away. I still heard nothing and couldn't see anything in the direction she kept looking. Slowly, I noticed a gray and white-haired creature moving in down like a canine hunting. When I got the first good look, I immediately recognized it. This time, though, I didn't have any anxiety no racing heart and felt completely calm unlike the first encounter. It was not because I had my rifle as the first encounter I had my shotgun that I carried to and from the house even. It moved through the woods and almost seemed to be avoiding me, but also the feeling it knew I was there. It walked behind the denser underbrush and would almost leap through the shooting lanes I had as to try and stay hidden and not give me a shot. Not that I was going to as I have a strong belief that cryptids and paranormal interactions should be viewed and felt with strong actions, a last resort option. It only made a very low growl as it would have been entering the field about 75 yards from me. I waited around 30 minutes before heading in for the night as the creature moving through would have kept anything from coming in. 
As I walked back, I never felt the need to rush or even look behind me. Coming into the small grass field we let grow over on the property, there once again was a rush of wind and a dark object in the sky, which I could see better this time as a triangular-shaped object, but had rounded out sides like a triangle that was filled and the sides were about to burst. It moved slowly the direction the creature moved, and then quickly disappeared in the opposite direction extremely quickly. The last time I had an interaction with the same creature was only three years ago, but now 50-55 miles to the south. I was hunting the Allegan State game area only a few days into the firearm season. Anyone that knows that area during deer season knows it is filled with hunters from all over. I usually would go to the more difficult areas as the city people wanted to hunt 10 feet from their vehicle and not have to work for their deer. I was deep in the woods by the Swan Creek area, and the sun was just starting to get up to be able to break through the dense trees. I am used to the weird and sometimes unsettling feeling that area gives you but today felt weird. I hadn't seen any other cars on my way to the area, so I felt good about a successful hunt. As the minutes went by I could hear a few deer moving in, and was hoping a buck wouldn't be far behind. It was cooler this morning than the last few, and it was easy to see one's breath. I started seeing the breath from behind some berry shrubs that I believed to be the deer I had heard, and was excited to see them move through. After ten minutes went by and the breathing kept coming from the same spot, I started thinking maybe there is a buck behind the shrubs, and he can smell me or know something's up. Then the does all booked it through the opening by the shrubs and were full speed through the woods. Shortly behind them was a sight I forgot about, and this time had my heart almost exploding and my anxiety at max. Without any threat towards me, at least at the moment, my fight or flight was at red level, and I was panicking what to do. I'm around 1,000 yards in dense woods with many hollows and ridges to get to my vehicle, and nobody hunting with me to try and get to me. Being the zone I was in I had my shotgun, but with what I have seen in the past, I wasn't too sure I was safe even with it. I traveled roughly 150 staying relatively slowly as to not make noise. As I waited by a tree and was listening and looking behind me the wood were dead quiet. No birds, no squirrels running about and no wind. Some would think this is great because you can hear everything. But those who spend time in the woods know when an apex animal moves in either the warning calls go off or it goes silent in the woods. I kept moving at a more increased pace and kept checking my phone for better service to call my in-laws to head out to my area for assistance. I was maybe 200 yards from my vehicle and I seen what I thought was my true end. On a small mound about 75 yards ahead stood a creature on all fours. But this one was different. The hair was brown and black, looked to be bigger, and this time the front half was fully visible, and I could see that it was the same kind of beast I've seen each time before. Half wolf, half great ape, and I thought this thing is a test tube baby of some mad scientist. It stared directly at me for about five minutes, and I was sure the other was somewhere close watching from behind. Then a huge gust of air came through the trees and the creature ran as if it was being hunted itself. I leaned against the tree by me inside and felt a huge relief wash over me, almost like a shower of protection. I opened my eyes and looked up feeling I would see the same thing as before, but there was clouds and open sky. Then the clouds seemed to distort and get morphed. Kinda like when glass has a curve or defect, and it distorts your view of objects behind it. I know it was another craft flying above the trees, and it was either a different one altogether or a different mechanism to hide being it was day like this time. Now comes the really fun part. For about two years after I had almost ghost-like visits from these creatures. That is really the only way to explain it. They both would show up in my woods while collecting firewood or on a walk with my kids. Now I never got the same feelings I did the other times I felt like it was a memory playing in my head, except they moved and did things I didn't physically see them do. One day I had my dog with me, which I trained to protect my kids and wife at the time. He even tried to attack me when my ex took him in the woods on a leash. I put on a new hoodie and pulled the hood over my face. 
He came after me and even calling his name didn't calm him just when he was close enough to smell me so he I know catches everything around him. He was not on a leash this day, and not even ten feet in his hair raises, and he starts growling. But he seemed confused as to why himself. Then I seen both beasts about twenty feet ahead. I could see through them, and they moved as if made of smoke. My dog lunged at one and went right through it with it dissipating like mist thinning in the morning sun. The other walked behind a tree and never came out the other side. It's been a few years now and I haven't seen the creatures fully, but keep getting shadows at the edge of my view that look like them, and they keep getting close on both sides each time. I have the biggest problem with how can what was a full physical interaction with what I figured was a cryptid, or maybe Otherworld being now be more paranormal, spirit interaction that seems like a soul following me. Could they have died and I am the one they didn't get, or are they projecting to me like a calling? Either way, holding it in for years and keeping the other two encounters from the couple people I still talked to from the original group, I finally figured I'd put the encounters and instances out there and let others give their feelings and takes on it. None of it has interfered with my life other than a few close heart attacks from anxiety or the couple sleepless nights right after the encounters. Take as you will and am looking forward to the responses. But as for going from a physical interaction to spectral over the years, I am lost and I am hoping I can get answers for the most extreme situation I have been through out of all my experiences with physical oddities and those that seem to be those of long ago lost between planes and afraid to move on. Comment or don't, I needed it out there and wonder if there are others with the same type of bizarre interactions that last decades and even change drastically. So I hope you guys don't mind this is going to be a relatively long post so just bear with me. I'm not sure exactly if this is just maybe a strange coincidence, or if maybe it's something more than that. Maybe just maybe I'm dealing with something of the paranormal, I'll let you decide. Let me first give you just a little bit of background about me. I go by the name of Dennis, obviously not my real name, but for the sake of this story that's what you can call me. I'm from a pretty small town surrounded by lots of woods and the national park that I work at. Well, I guess I'll just keep that under wraps for now. This occurred at roughly about 3 in the morning. I was on my TV and I began to hear strange animal sounds. Now, that's really strange for me because I'm pretty well versed in the animals that I know. I've heard it all mountain lions, bear, wild dogs, you name it. But the sound that I was hearing did not match up with anything that I'm used to hearing. So that was a number one red flag. And then the second red flag is... I began to hear heavy, rapid breathing like if something was drowning the kind of sound, but it was much deeper, much more guttural, like it had this raspy quality to it, as if whatever voice it was was not only large, but had smoked about three packs of cigarettes a day for the last ten years. So as I'm sitting there listening to this, I think I should pull up my phone and start to record the noise. Well, I do this and the breathing noise stops, just everything abruptly stops, not only the breathing noises, but even all the crickets around me just cease and everything's quiet. Now I'm beginning to get a little unnerved, and I start to feel like I'm no longer safe, like something is watching me, but I'm not exactly sure what. So I kind of thoroughly check my surroundings, make sure I have all my equipment with me because God only knows what this could have been. And that's when I start to speculate that I'm probably not dealing with a regular everyday animal, this might be something else. I hate to go into the hole, it's paranormal, but I don't know, I've never dealt with these sorts of emotions and feelings from any sort of regular animal, at least none that I've ever encountered. I began feeling very uncomfortable, I figured it would just be best to get in my TV and go ahead and get going. I'm still really clueless as to what animal this could have been. Thanks for listening, Horror Cowboys. See you tomorrow at the same time.